All right, so where we left off in the last video was starting to play with layer adjustments to adjust the lighting and the color of our individual layer assets. Some of them are cut out very nicely, like this rock, the mist, the tree needs some work, the foreground rocks, they need to be cut out some more. But before I get too deep into really refining the cutouts and deciding if they need to be soft edge edges or hard edge edges, I can play with lighting and coloring and that can make my job a little bit easier. Because the more the lighting and coloring match each other, the less you need to obsess about cutting things away. So, I have to peel away these layers from the foreground back in order to control the coloring and the lighting. So this is as far as I got, just the far background, playing with each of these, kind of adjusting them. So now let's keep moving forward. You notice how this rock is much uh, warmer. It has kind of a, a brightness to it and a yellowness to it that doesn't really match the sky or that light source behind. And it kind of asserts itself pushing forward. Now, it's in my composition sketch, so I need that to be prominent and I need that edge to be clear. So there's a few ways I can do that. But the, the most basic ways are the ones I'll always recommend you start with. Click on that layer, click on Image Adjustments, and go to Levels. And then we're going to play with the lights and darks, uh, always playing with the mid-tones first. So, by playing with the levels, we play with this mid-tone slider, the gray slider first. That way we can make it brighter if we slide it to the left, or darker if we move it to the right. And I want to move mine a little bit darker. Then we can actually limit its bright highlights just to push that a little bit more into the background. Now, honestly, if there were really suns behind it and those suns were close, like the sun in our atmosphere or in our solar system, um, this would be almost black because it would be silhouetted by that sun. So you can immediately see how that starts to sell the illusion. I'm not sure I need to go that dark with it. But I have that option. So sometimes, this is the great um, value of digital art. You can push the sliders back and forth and just see what looks right. You don't need to know exactly what you're looking for until you see it. And that's not something you can do with traditional collage. So then once I'm done with levels, I'll hit Command Z and I'll toggle it back and forth. And you see what a difference that makes in kind of syncing that into the landscape. But it also shows me what still needs to change. I need to change the, the warmth of it, what I call the temperature of the lighting. And so I go to Image Adjustments, and we're going to go to Color Balance. This is a very subtle color adjustment. Hue Saturation is your major color adjustment. And we'll play with that um, eventually. But right now, I just want to push it in the midtones again, away from yellow a little bit. Doesn't take much to bring it back into kind of those purples. And basically, it's the exact same rock. Now it's just that rock under the lighting of that sky. And I might try a little bit of magenta, maybe a little bit of cyan. And now it feels like, yeah, it's, it's matching pretty well. Notice there's subtle adjustments. And if I need to, I can go into the shadows and I can warm up the shadows or cool them down. And generally, whatever I would do to the shadows, I would do the opposite to the highlights. Because even though the temperature changes, you want to use that color theory to have uh, warm highlights generally and cool shadows, or if you're flipping them, warm shadows and cool highlights. When you have cool highlights and cool shadows, or cool wa warm highlights and warm shadows, you have kind of a very dead coloring. It doesn't have that dynamic contrast to it that is often very appealing. And just like we did with the levels, once you're done, you can hit Command Z and you can see the difference that made. So just with the simple layer adjustments of levels and color balance, we went from this to this to this. And now, if I covered the bottom of the screen, right, 
from here up, that's looking pretty believable. With one little exception, but we'll get to that. Like whether we have all these sharp edges in the sky, they feel a little too sharp edged. So one thing I'm gonna do is soften that focus later, but we're not doing that yet. Okay, so now it's just lighting and color. So now this is a tricky one because this is multicolored. Now, if I look at my composition sketch, I need those multiple colors to be a little bit stronger in the composition. So I don't need the whole thing to go darker or even to go more contrasted, but let me show you some of those options. So if I select that, I can just select the layer group and do, and you'll notice my image adjustments aren't an option to me anymore. And that's because this layer group is made up of multiple layers. So what can I do? Well, I can merge those together. And one way to do that is to just right click on the, the folder group and say merge group. And if you don't have a folder, you can simply select the individual layers and say layer merge layers. If I select multiple layers, you'll see them. Layer merge layers. The shortcut for that is Command D. That will now allow me to adjust the levels and the color balance of just one group. So if I'm going for this composition, you can see how I need those edges to really show up on the background. And just by darkening the midtones, I can achieve that, but I also lose that kind of airy lightness of the mist that I like. And if I do the opposite, I lose a lot of that color definition. But that kind of gives me those compositional shapes too. So this is an instance where I don't want to maybe change the levels everywhere. I might want to do a spot treatment on the levels. So basically I want to darken it on the bottoms and I want to brighten it on the tops. And I could just try doing a levels adjustment and going from both edges, right? And that strengthens the contrast. But the problem with that is you'll see I, I start losing information in my brights and I start losing, I don't think I've lost it yet to black, but in my darks, I start losing information. So a safer way to do that, besides using these edges of the levels, I might use them a tiny bit in the histogram, but I, I don't want to lose any of that pigment data. Instead, I'm going to use spot um, lighting adjustment tools. And these are photography tools. They're called Dodge and Burn. And they come from a dark room. And they're quite a bit down. They're the last of the raster tools before you get into the vector tools with the pen tool. And it looks like a black lollipop. That is what's called the dodge tool. And that's because when you're using an enlarger in a dark room and you want a photograph to not get as dark in an area, you can hold a little cut out, a black lollipop in front of it, and that will block the light, keep that from getting so dark and overexposed. So the dodge tool is going to brighten. It's basically um, playing with the highlights. But up here in the tools, this is really helpful. Whenever we use dodge and burn, and we'll use them quite extensively in these compositing projects, we want to have the exposure at less than 20. That's because these tools are really strong and they, they change the lighting very quickly. So by changing the exposure to less than 20, um, they're going to move more slowly and you're going to control it a little bit better. The other thing we're going to do is we're always going to start adjusting the midtones. So I never want to dodge the highlights because that will just push them to, to solid white very quickly. So instead, I'm going to go to the midtones first. Then just like when you're painting, you can, though we're not painting, we're adjusting found pixels. We can choose a brush size. I'm going to use a large brush that's very soft hardness because we don't want to have these kind of artificial hard edges that are made from where we dodge and burn. Okay. It's only going to, going to affect the layer I'm on, and this is going to brighten the midtones. But you see, we'll do it in a targeted way. So if I want to bring out that edge, that top edge to kind of 
make that compositional shape. I need to brighten it. And you can see that actually saturates the color in the midtones. So I'm just brightening it a little bit on that edge. And then Command Z, you can see the difference. Actually, I can't do Command Z because look at all those dodge tools I did. So instead, I'm going to go way back to where before I did the dodge tool and then hit Command Z and you'll see the difference. So this is, can be incredibly helpful to you matching the lighting, the illusion of your landscape. So we want something that's believable. Okay, next, I'm going to use the tool underneath the dodge tool it looks like a cupped hand. It is the burn tool, and it focuses light in the dark room to darken on the photo paper with more exposure to light. So same thing. I'm going to adjust the midtones. I want my exposure to be less than 20. Usually I'll do around 15. I want a brush that's 0% hardness and quite large. And then what am I trying to do? I'm trying to bring out this composition. So where I need those edges to show up, I'm going to burn them down. You can do this on the rock. You can do this on any texture in water. As long as you have it soft edged, we're dodging and burning the midtones. Now remember, I have this layer somewhat transparent, right? Right now it says 100%, but that's because I merged them. So if I wanted that not to be transparent, I could just hit Command J and it will make it more solid, but the mist doesn't make sense if it's completely solid. So that's why I'm keeping it somewhat transparent. All right. So now I can see if that burn tool makes a difference, especially the burn and the dodge tool by going back in my history. And that is a huge difference. Let's see, I'm going to duplicate it once and then take this down. There we go. And then merge these two. So it's not quite as transparent as it was. I can always take it less opaque. Okay, so next, because I think I'm going to want that rock to come through a little bit more eventually. Okay, next, next layer in front of that. This is all the near ground stuff. And you can see there's a lot of hard edges. So I'm going to uncouple this group and look at it. First thing I know is I don't want that super hard edge there. I need that to, to gradate, to soften. So we have a few options for this. The easiest is a filter. And it's the only filter we will use consistently. So what I'm going to do is take the edge I want to soften, just select it. A rough selection of that edge. Then I'm going to go up to filter to blur, which will take focus away, which the computer is very good at doing. It can soften things really well. It's not very good at sharpening things. And we are going to go to Gaussian blur. This is the most basic way to control um, the loss of focus. And then I use the slider and I can soften it. I can go so far that it looks like just a cloud of gas. But I don't want to go that far. So it's like using a soft edged eraser. But that has the effect, I'll deselect, of making this look like it's in the foreground, this look, look like it's more in the background. Now I'll use my handy dandy uh, large eraser. And instead of it being at 100% opacity, where I could adjust this edge, right? So I'm trying to get that shape still in there. I can go to a lower opacity. And just hit it lightly. Oops. Let's go quite low. Like so. Now let's add to that this kind of heat distortion layer. 